Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HP ProLiant DL580 Gen 7 server memory upgrades and how to properly load and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the uh, HP ProLiant DL580 Gen 7 server. Uh, do us a favor if you find anything useful in this video, uh, hit the like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's get started. Uh, first things first, this is the next gen from the DL580 G6. Uh, there are four CPUs inside. You have a couple of choices of what you can use as far as Intel Xeon 7500 series or the Intel Xeon uh, E7 4800 or E7 8800 series. Uh, we recommend using the E7 and we'll get into a little bit more, uh, a little bit later why we recommend that. Uh, there are uh, 64 DIMM slots in here and it utilizes a DDR3 memory. And you can get to 64 by using uh, eight memory risers and each riser has uh, eight DIMM slots on it and we'll show you that more in a, uh, in a few minutes here. So uh, there's uh, one type of memory that you can use for this machine and it is ECC registered also known as RDIMM. And with uh, the ECC registered modules you can use a couple of different speeds. You can go as low as uh, 1066 up to 1333 or all the way up to 1600. Uh, but to be honest the 1600 is going to clock down anyway so the 1333. So we always recommend to people to either get the 1066 or the 1333. And there's a couple of different sizes you can use. You can go as low as a 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig. But there's a key for the 32 gig. You have to have E7 processors to be able to use the 32 gig modules. So what that basically means is that the max for this machine depends on your processor. So uh, for the E7 processors, the max you can get is 2 terabytes via 64 32 gigs. However, with the uh, 7500 series prox, you can only do 1 terabyte, and that would be uh, 64 4 via uh, 16 gigabytes and both of those again would be at the uh, 1600 megahertz but they're just going to clock down anyways okay so now that we know a little bit more about the system let's go ahead and open it up i'll show you how to uh, pull out the risers how to load them a couple of uh, uh, tricks like the flap in there that might uh, might catch you as far as when you're trying to put it back in and you're, you're getting jammed and you're wondering why and that might be why you're watching this video uh, but before we do i'm going to grab my esd gear really it's always uh, best before you get into a machine to have esd gear on to protect it so we'll be right back all right now that we have our esd gear on we're safe to open in the machine so we've uh, kind of switched the angles for you here to make it a little bit easier to see kind of what we're going to do to actually get inside it's a little bit different than some of the normal servers a lot of the servers uh, you know there's a latch on top and you open the top uh, and then you get access to the CPUs and RAM uh, with the uh, DL580 Gen 7 it's a little bit different so uh, you're gonna uh, basically pull out what I call a big uh, expansion card it's really just like a, the motherboard so uh, you're gonna pop this blue clip right here just gonna lift it up and this latch is going to come out, okay, and you're just going to simply pull it out. And you're going to see it's going to get stuck here in a second, right there. It clicks into place, and there are blue buttons on this side, and even though you can't see it on this side right here, so you're going to need to squeeze both blue buttons, push them in, and then pull it out. And now, technically, if this were in a rack right now, this becomes dead weight, and you're pretty much supporting it. So just a heads up, if you're using this, you're, you're, or you're disassembling this in the rack, just be careful that this is going to become dead weight at this point. So for us now, I can just pull it out, um, and you can see the whole thing here. Um, and then you're going to want to lift this uh, top up. So you'll see there's a lock right here, and you're just going to simply push this together. And then the uh, the top of this cage here comes out, and boom! Now you have access to really everything you need. So uh, technically, this one currently only has uh, two CPUs inside, and you can see the other spot if you wanted to add in CPU three and four. Um, and there's only four risers in here right now. We're actually going to add more after this video, uh, but you're going to put in um, if you want to max it out. You're going to put in all eight risers, all four CPUs, and making sure that you're using E7 CPUs. Um, so I'll show you how to pull the, the riser out. It's really very simple. It's just these two blue tabs. You're just going to lift up and take it straight out. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and angle this a little bit different to make it easier for you guys to see. So I'll be right back. Okay, I thought this might be a little bit better angle for you guys to kind of really see everything. And I wanted to uh, really kind of zoom in on the actual DIMMs themselves as opposed to the whole uh, expansion card and everything. So uh, first things first, you're going to see there is this blue tab right here. So you can't just lift straight up. You just need to kind of pop this right here and it's just going to come straight down or straight up. Um, and it's on a hinge. So really, I'm just going to keep it flat like this and it's just going to stay propped up. So now that we're in, you can see uh, that... This, there's eight of these risers, and each of these risers have eight DIMM slots. Um, and within that, there are four memory channels, meaning that there are two DIMMs 
per channel. And this is actually uh, really important because for this generation, it does not accept load reduced memory. Uh, you can't start using load reduced modules, uh, also known as LR DIMMs, until the eighth generation from HP. So that being said, you run into what's called the rank rule issue. Uh, for some of the other systems like the uh, DL380 and 360 Gen 6 and Gen 7 for instance uh, they have three DIMMs per channel uh, so luckily uh, with the technology from uh, HP on the DL580 uh, Gen 7 you don't run into that issue so if anyone was worried about that or was hoping they could use load reduce uh, you can't use load reduce but you don't have to worry about the rank rule for ECC registered so on that note uh, the white DIMM slot is the start of each channel okay so if you're looking at it here um, you'll see that uh, if you wanted to load let's just say uh, only four modules it's going to be the four white dim slots now honestly what i would recommend for a machine like this this machine is a, a beast of a machine it's meant to to do a lot of work and to to do uh, really like hard application so really uh, I personally recommend loading it all the way up maxing this machine out that's really what it's for but again if you were only putting in uh, four DIMMs per riser you want to make sure you're doing it at the start of the memory channel which is just the white slot um, and it just goes white black white black white black white black so it's pretty simple so uh, on that note I'm gonna go ahead and start loading a couple of these in here to show you how to actually uh, physically do it uh, before we do I want to point out that uh, on the module, there is a notch right in the middle, also known as a key. This key is very important because uh, basically it prevents users from putting in the wrong modules, uh, but it's also important because there uh, on the, uh, the DIMM slot itself on the motherboard or on the riser here, uh, there's a little plastic piece that sticks up that, w that uh, is where the notch goes. So if I had it flipped the wrong way and I tried to install it, uh, it wouldn't line up properly by yeah, a quarter inch, half an inch roughly, um, and it could damage the DIMM uh, itself, damage the leads, or it could even break the plastic piece and potentially damage the whole DIMM slot, which could re render the whole riser broken and then you'd have to buy a new riser. And luckily for this machine, it would just be a riser, but for a lot of servers out there, if you're not being careful and you load it the wrong way, you'd actually damage the motherboard, which is uh, even worse. So that being said, uh, it's going to be lined up this way, um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to properly do it. So. Uh, personally, I also, um, one of the things I like to do is I like to make sure all the tabs are open. This makes it easier before you get started that you're not fumbling around um, and it's just everything's just easy to go. Um, and when I put it in, you line it up properly so you got the notch in there. And I want to show you, look, I'm not touching it. It's in there. It looks like it's seated. You, you can see the tabs aren't fully in there, but it feels like it's seated. We have a, a, a all too often a customer thinks that a uh, DIM is not working when really it is just uh, that the module is not fully seated. So here's what you want to hear. You're going to hear this click when you push it in on both sides. That is, um, you can even see that the tab just pops right into it. And um, if you've never really looked at the side of a module, there's these little notches on the side and that's where that tab goes and it basically pushes the leads down into the DIM slot just to make sure that it is fully uh, fully inserted. So simple things like that that really you could be a technician for 20 years or you could be a you know brand new person. Anyone can make that mistake. I have done it all too many times myself when I have built out servers. So uh, just a very easy common mistake. So now I'll go ahead and I'll finish loading this up and just show you guys how easy it is to do. So voila, well, just like that, you can see how easy it really is. I mean, really, you could do a riser in 30 seconds to a minute. You could go through this whole machine in really easily under 30 minutes, and you could swap out all four processors if you wanted to upgrade the processor, swap out all the DIMMs. Uh, really, it's, it's not too hard to do. It's just a little bit of time and a little bit of effort in making sure that you're getting the right uh, modules and the right processors for your system. So uh, next thing, you're just going to close this. Personally, sometimes it'll get stuck. You'll see uh, that the blue tab just kind of hits it. So sometimes you have to kind of lift it up a little bit to help it go over and you'll hear it click shut. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to put it back into the uh, expansion card because um, uh, there's, this is a real common problem that you're going to see with this flap. So I'll show you this right now. All right, before I put the riser back in, I wanted to show a, a very common problem that we see quite often. Um, there are these little flaps, these little black flaps. Hope that the uh, video will show it well for you. But these little black flaps right here um, that are on each riser that you're seeing me push out. Um, if you do not hold this flap open and you try to put the riser in like this, 
uh, you're going to basically run into an issue and you're not going to be able to do it and you're going to wonder what the heck is going on. Well, it's this uh, little flap here. So you just need to make sure that the flap is open. And now the riser just slides down beautifully, just like that. So, and then these blue tabs, you're just going to want to push them shut. And now it's physically in there, OK? So it's really just that simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and knock these out and actually add some more in and add in the procs. Uh, when we're done with the video, I just wanted to do one real quick just to show you how easy really it is to do. So uh, that being said, um, all I need to do now uh, is put the cage top back on, which is very easy. And you see this click right here, and we're back to locked. Okay, so you can even see. Oh, I guess there it goes. And it click in properly. So you'll see right now when I try to pull it back up, it is officially locked. You need to hear that click. Okay, and then you're just simply gonna slide the expansion board back in. It's gonna get stuck right here, and you're gonna need to push these blue buttons just like you did uh, when you pulled it out. And now we're fully in. Or I shouldn't say fully in, but now we're in enough where we can slide it. And so once we get to this point, one of the things I've noticed with several of the machines that we've gotten in, when you go to close the latch right here, it doesn't always physically want to go, go in. So sometimes you do have to push right here a little bit to just to kind of make sure it gets in. And then you can kind of push it all the way and you'll see it, it clicks into place. So if you're running into that issue, one of the, the things that we say, just kind of push on the top a little bit and it'll help it just guide it in. So really just that easy. So uh, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the uh, HP Proliant DL 580 Gen 7 and uh, how to install some of the memory. If you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like and smash the subscribe. And if you need any RAM upgrades yourself, we have a ton of 16 gigs and 32 gigs in stock. Uh, so if there's something that you're looking to, uh, or there's some machines that you're looking to upgrade in your data center, then please reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And hey, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.